Welcome to um, our live webinar. We'll be looking at building relationships and creating content for your audience. Looking at Future Female specifically, we are a platform that connects, inspires and support existing and aspiring female entrepreneurs. We want to increase the number of successful female entrepreneurs across all sectors. We are the go-to destination for key resources, community, inspiration, business, skill development, and education. I am very excited to be announcing our speaker for this evening, which is Camus. There's no better person suited to learn from than Camus, founder of Will & Kate. Camus is also recognized as one of South Africa's top influencers on Instagram. She has truly shown a skill set by building influence and also creating long lasting relationships with all of her fans and followers. She's collaborated with brands such as Cartier, Wolford, Chanel, Country Road, Fathers of London, and Topshop. She is a creative director, stylist, motivator, speaker, influencer, and has a massive passion for blogging. <laughs> Hi, everyone. I'm so excited to be here today. And I'm so excited to be talking to future females and just sharing a little bit of my knowledge and what's going on with influencing and business. So welcome. And I can't wait to have a conversation with everyone. Oh, it's just really? so weird that we're in this setting, like, you know, like, in terms of COVID, like I wish it was a, a proper event, you know, but I mean, <laughs> this is obviously what we have to deal with right now, <laughs> but it's still good. I feel like we'll still be able to connect with everyone. And take away what we need to take away. I must say, um, okay. I'll make sure to get you in a live event as soon as possible. <laughs> Don't worry about it. As <laughs> Thank soon you as we're allowed <laughs> and we can fill the seats, we'll definitely make sure to do that. <laughs> okay. I look very for I look forward to that to that day. <laughs> oh brilliant. Can we yeah, I wanna kick off um by telling our audience that we're gonna have a few discussion points and we're gonna be talking mm. about influencer marketing branding presentation and content creation and then also camus role as an influencer as well as a business and a blog while we're going to be going through the discussions if you have any questions on a specific topic i would definitely recommend just popping it in the comment section before you forget um, and we'll be taking questions afterwards and have a discussion and di diving deeper into your specific questions um so yeah i must we, say if, though i'm a little bit mm. nervous about the question sorry because <laughs> <laughs> i feel like people always ask me difficult questions but it's okay it's good it's a good challenge <laughs> uh yeah no don't stress about it if there's any difficult questions then we can always say we'll think about it and get back to them <laughs> okay, so cool. yeah if there's anything like that then just just tell us and then we'll take it from there so don't stress about it too okay, much cool. um yeah so first of all i want to have a look at and if you can maybe tell us and give us a bit of a background on you know how you started with your blogging career um how it started and actually what what your business and your entrepreneurship has actually grown into today so this is, I don't know, this is such an interesting story to tell because I feel like every time I tell it, it's different, but it's more or less the same thing. Um, but generally, how I started blogging is I didn't actually know it would turn into a business. When I first started, it was a passion project. And I had a friend, so I was studying in the uh, London College of Fashion University, Arts of London, um, of, of London in London. So um, basically what happened was I was studying fashion media and communication um, and that was my bridging course, obviously from a trick to doing a degree. And in that sort of like, we had to do like a lot of stylist um, practicals, right? So I wasn't, I really studied uh, photography when I was at Lysoft, but when I was in London, I wanted to focus more on my styling, um, you know, skills that I had. So I had a friend that was wanting to be in fashion photography. And so she said to me that she would take pictures of me and I would do styling because we had to hand in these practicals at the end of the year. So I would do the styling and we, you know, at that stage, we didn't, we didn't have access to models, you know? So I was just like, okay, I'll wear the clothing. You take pictures of me and then you see how it goes. So we started doing that in the beginning and 
a lot of my research when I was um, obviously researching about style and personal style, I came across a lot of personal blogging um, websites, you know, a lot of bloggers in the UK had already like, you know, gone up and stuff. And that was a, a thing there. So I started looking at a lot of blogging and I was kind of interested by how people were able to like interpret themselves through style and through sort of like storytelling on websites. So I kind of like went into that. I signed myself up on a website. Um, I must say that my very first website was really embarrassing. If you had to see what it looked like, <laughs> I don't think I would put my name on it now, but um, it really did what it had to do. So I managed to get up on um, a website and start taking pictures with my colleague. And we sort of just went with the journey. I sort of went to the journey. I started attending blogger events in London and that really helped me establish my brand and the blog. And that's when it slowly came into like me working with clients, with brands. And, and, and I kind of enjoyed that process of like sort of creative direction and styling. Um, and that's what I sort of led into and then it became a business. So I focused then more on the branding side of it. Oh, wow. Um, I must say something that I've noticed, which, which is something that you just mentioned as well when you guys started is the collaboration and I think that's kind of one of the most successful keys that I've seen people use and I think it's brilliant especially in COVID times um, yeah. how you guys started with your friend being a photographer and you having the passion for blogging and kind of merging these two ideas um, you know to, to start getting the ball rolling that's that's brilliant I think collaboration is actually one of my favorite parts of, um, of blogging. I like collaborating with people that you would never expect to see me with. So it's just, I think that's something that's, um, you know, I step out of my comfort zone, you know, a little bit more further and further. And that's really good because it's, you know, done so much. So in COVID, I've actually, it's pushed me to think like beyond the boundaries that I'm in. So I can't wait to discuss that further with you guys. Oh. Wow, yeah, yeah, we're definitely going to be getting to that. Um, and looking at your business and how it's grown, I know our, our next topic that we, we want to be looking at is, is branding specifically um, and the role it's played, you know, with your business. I just want to ask you where you started with your career, when you started with your passion project, your blog. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. what, what tips would you have for any entrepreneurs that, that were sitting there thinking, okay, we want to start our own business. Um, how, how do they kind of ground themselves knowing, you know, like, this is what I want to do. Um, I know when we spoke earlier, you mentioned your diary. So if we can maybe look at that mm -hmm. specifically. Um, <laughs> I think that's pretty much one of the basic tips that's consistently yes. in training and education, but people tend to look over, you know, the basics. Yeah, I think the question itself is such a big question to answer. So I'm going to try give you a personal story and then kind of give you tips of like where mm -hmm. to start and how to do it. But firstly, like when I first started, I mean, obviously, like I said, I didn't know that it was going to turn into a business. Um, but the thing that I knew is that I wanted to create something. Um, I was always really creative in, in high school, you know, so I used to do a lot of arts and stuff. So I always knew that I wanted to create something, but I just didn't know in what medium and how I wanted to create it, whether it was with painting. So, um, or if it was in photography, I just enjoyed the creative arts. So I started off in nice off and I enjoyed painting. So I decided, you know what, I actually want to do makeup. So I tried um, a makeup course for three years, an advanced makeup course, which I really absolutely loved. And that was my form of painting on people's faces. Um, I then sort of took up something like photography. So I tried and tested all my skills that I loved and see which, and like kind of like saw which one was the best for me and what would work the best and which one I liked and which I didn't like. I also went into publication because I always thought that I would be in a magazine. I did not like that. It just wasn't my thing. Um, but basically, so I did makeup photography and those were the two basic skills that I kind of needed. So then I went and I did my fashion media and communication and that sort of led me into doing creative direction. That's when I sort of branched off into building a brand. So basically, it's so important to get your skills to practice on them before you build your brand so that you know what you like and what you don't like. Don't be scared to try different things, because I think with that journey is when you actually become really good at what you're doing. So um, I think just the beginning of it is that I actually now still am learning when it comes to my brand. And I'm going to get into a little bit 
just how to sort of build the brand um, slowly with a few tips. But what I've actually, I'm still currently building my own brand, you know, and it's never a, a, a thing that I've built my brand and then I stop. I constantly am building and building and building. But there's one thing I have a journal, that one that you're talking about is my goals journal. And this is something that I absolutely love. This is something that I got in London, but you can get it on online. It's called a girl's um, sort of journal. And what it has is it has all these like inspirational things of what to do. But my favorite thing about this journal is I literally write down every single idea that I have that I want to do, whether if it's in my business or whether it's in a different sort of field, I kind of write it down and um, it gives me long-term, medium and short-term goals on how to sort of like keep myself focused and on track. I think with doing that, you're kind of putting it out into the world and you're manifesting really you have to small whether it's passion or whether it's something that you really just are set on, you know, I want to make this a business. So the the the, the most important tip I think for just is this establishing a brand would be to know what kind of brand that you want to build, you know, the brand description. So what is your brand? What, why do you want to do it? Ask the, yourself the questions that everyone else would ask you. And don't be scared like when people ask you questions and even sometimes they might criticize you. It's good to get criticism because it makes you think a little bit further to better your, your brand as a whole. So just understanding the brand core in basic terms. And then I would say to differentiate yourself and position yourself. So how are you different from say there's another product how are you different if i'm making a shampoo for example how am i different from all the other shampoos that are on the shelf what makes me different and differentiate yourself and, and just go into um the core and you or service you know and also looking at your target um audience i think as a whole that point is just about research so Going out, looking at your target market, who's going to use it? Why are they going to use it? Why are they going to use you specifically other than, you know, another brand that they would choose? And then brand promotion. So once you've got all the information, do lots of lots and lots of research on that. And once you've gone into that, go to the brand promotion. You don't always need, I mean, if you're not really good in marketing and advertising, there are certain short courses that you can do to just learn a little bit more about this. Mm. And this is what I did. I learned a little bit more about fashion media and communication because that was a big part of my brand and um so i think with brand promotion you just have to do a lot of more research as well how you how do you want people to perceive you especially your target audience and your consumer how do you want them to perceive you and then lastly i would say more points sorry last analyze your brand so this would be back to the second step so how are you different from everyone else what is that unique thing that, that is about you that will make you different and i can give an example for me in terms of influencing for me it was a thing of being minimal being effortless but still kind of like sticking to luxury in a different way and premium brands that for me was my unique selling point and that still is my unique selling point and i always even if i'm furthering my brand i'm that's something that i always go back to to remember that that this is what i'm this is who i am um, so yeah, and just looking at your values and your mission and yeah, and keeping to that because that you'll always need. And then lastly, just evaluating the brand at whole. So after you've written everything down, you go back and you have a look and you say, okay, is this going to work? And why is it going to work? Then this is also the, the best thing is to ask people to give you a second opinion as well. Because I found that like, even with my blog, I like you more like Thing. And I just kind of believe that, you know what, right now for me, it's my niche markets. And that's kind of what I wrote down in the beginning. I wasn't trying to focus on like, you know, everyone at all, because you can't be everyone to, you know, everything to everyone. So I kind of mm -hmm. like focused on that and said, you know, this is my brand. And that helped me sort of evaluate my brand a little bit further to say, well, this is who I am. And this is what I'm going to stick to. I hope that's enough information. <laughs> wow. Well, no, no, no. That's definitely, it's perfect. And, um, I love that you, you went so factual. Thank you so much. We're definitely, we're actually recording the video as well. So we'll make sure to, for everybody that's watching, just keep an eye on our Facebook page. We'll have everything Gamri just mentioned there for you. Um, but something I've noticed on your Instagram page as well, in talking about your branding and your consistency and your minimalism that, that consistently shows, um, 
I must say it's, it's, it's one of the, the basic pillars when it comes to, you know, designing your business plan per se. But I've, something I've noticed when, when chatting with you is um, as an entrepreneur, you kind of need to stay grounded as far as possible. You need to know, you know, where your company is moving. What op- so whenever opportunities comes by, is it, is, is it currently aligning with your business goals and where you're yeah, kind of exactly. moving towards? Or may it in the long run kind of damage your brand, even though there's, there, there's a lot of gains specifically right now in the, in the direct sense. Mm-hmm. Um, so thank you so much for that. That, that makes 100% sense, you know, knowing, literally sitting down and thinking, What's your short-term goals? What's your medium-term goals? What's your long-term goals? What's your value proposition? What's your unique selling points, which you've mentioned? Yeah. Uh, I think that's kind of a make or break in the industry as well. Is if, if, if you're going to put out the exact same product or service than all of your competitors, um, mm. why, why would they come to you? That's kind of a new business, a new system finding your feed versus somebody that's that's already set the market tone and trend. So those are really valid points that you've given us there and for all the entrepreneurs. And thank you so I much. I actually for that. also want to add something just on something that you just said is Please like do. being able to stand your point. I mean stand your ground. And for me that has been my my biggest thing within my career is not being persuaded by, you know, how much the brand is offering for me to do something. But for me, it was always about being authentic and it was always about being true to myself and, you know, not like kind of persuading people to buy something that I wouldn't because I don't believe in that, you know, that's, that's my biggest thing. And believe it or not, do you know how many times I've had to say no to brand? I didn't with what I was doing and yes it's hard because I mean especially during like COVID for example like when you aren't getting that much like income and a brand comes in with like the perfect amount that you might need for this month's rent or whatever it is but you know what it does hurt you now if I say yes and in the long term when I have other clients bigger clients that I want to work with it does impact me in that way so I've had to say no to a lot of brands that you know, maybe I've loved, but not loved that much for me to like hurt it, you know, in terms of working with other brands. So I think it's always just kind of something that I've always done is write down every year in the beginning of the year, a list of brands that I want to work with in fashion in beauty in interior decor in, you know, a whole bunch of different things. And I write that down every single year in the beginning of the year. And I tick off as I go along, making sure that I stick on route with the brands that I've always wanted to work with and the brands that are associated with me. Um, sometimes But always so to stand out and say no you know this is not a perfect fit for me unfortunately and just stick to that and I think that's so important for any entrepreneur for any influencer that is in the business to to know that um you mentioned something now as well which <laughs> I kind of want to elaborate on a bit um yeah. because influencer marketing is quite um f- for entrepreneurs it's quite relatively as a new concept especially if you just started your own business Um, and I know myself when I started as an entrepreneur I kind of thought okay listen this is only something that big brands and big companies work with but I've noticed the trends in influencer marketing and how how important it is for your business to associate with influencers um, and make use of their audiences Um, what I want to ask you specifically regarding this, as you as an influencer as well, mm-hmm. when people approach you, what is it that you look for in companies specifically? Mm-hmm. So let's say a new business owner or you know a small to medium business approaches you, mm-hmm. and then to cooking, I'm I'm using this example specifically. <laughs> <laughs> so they're into cooking. Um, and they approach you and they say, listen, we want to partner with you for a specific campaign or marketing purpose because they like, they like the amount of follow, followers you have. What is it that they kind of need to do research on and make sure that they and you align with as well as your audience before they even approach yeah. you? 
So the, I think the most important thing as well is just for the brands and for the influencers to both research each other. It's kind of like when you go on a to do a background check, you have to really just do a background check on the brand as well as an influencer myself. So even though they are coming to me and they're approaching me, they have to research me as well, do a little background check. Why am I the perfect person for them? The same questions that they ask me, I should be able to ask them as well. Why are you the perfect brand for me? You know, I think what I always um, kind of something that you said is the trends as well. I think it's important that even though there are trends going, it's so important to stick to who you are, you know, with, within those trends as well. It's good to move with time, but don't move with time so that you're, you know, because like we spoke about your brand identity, that your brand identity gets lost. So I always say that, you know, stick to who you are within the trends, move with the times, but make sure that your brand identity is still intact. So um, I think the best example I can give you is like um, we spoke about cooking <laughs> and, you know, during this COVID time, everyone was cooking and that was their brand. Everyone was cooking and there's nothing wrong with that, but. Able to, I kind of like that wasn't really my, you know, sort of like loop into going to because that's not what I really wanted to focus on. I wanted to focus more on styling and, and like I said, you can't be everything to everyone. So even if someone, a brand, for example, wants to come and approach me with a, like, make a cooking recipe, I have to come, I can try and do it, but I have to make sure that I do it in my brand identity and it speaks to the same target audience that I initially had planned when I started my brand. So I think. A lot of people don't think about things like that. It's so important to do research as a brand. If you're coming to me and I'm an influencer, do research on me. Why am I the perfect person to influence your product, your service? Um, I think it's, we have to have the same core values. You know, we have to have the same sort of authenticity. The way that we speak to our um, consumers has to be sort of the same and it has to be in line. Um, and a lot of, I think, message lost in that message so so important that because that one person that's advertising your brand can change your brand completely and i think a lot of people don't think about things like that but it's so important just to like stick to that and just run with it i hope that answers your question <laughs> it does it does um and i'm so glad we actually got into this because this is something that you know when when i was exposed to influencers when you know entering the marketing industry i was like wow i just want the most followers as far as possible whenever i approach yeah. influencers and then that's something um that i've realized as well as just the way that i create my brand identity and i have a specific audience i'm i'm catering to and creating content for um Whoever I approach kind of needs to add value to my audience, but my audience mm. needs to be adding value to that specific influencer as well. Um, so it, it kind of needs to be a mutual beneficial um, relationship in that sense. So you did answer it. Yeah. Thank you so much. Guys, if you remember, <laughs> if you have any questions, pop it in the comment section so that um, can we can, you know, kind of just prep for it in advance. <laughs> um, <laughs> And then looking at your content and your branding, something that I've noticed as well and what I want to touch base on is mm -hmm. the specific platforms that you chose to use within your brand um, and that you cho kind of chose as your marketing platforms, I would say, because mm -hmm. there's so yeah. many different social media platforms. And I've, I've noticed that entrepreneurs kind of get overwhelmed from the beginning and they kind of register profiles on all of them and they're running around like head, headless chickens at the end of the day, not sure which one to, you know, kind of start. And then they go on with Instagram, then they start with YouTube. So why did you choose the specific platforms that you are currently working on? Um, and what advice on those platforms do you have for the entrepreneurs? Okay, so I don't know what your question. Okay, so I started with um, Instagram. I actually started with um, um, my website first, but that's because website was a big thing. You know, when I first started with blogging, it was the only thing that sort of you could um, sort of visualize and show people how you style things on online. So that was my first sort of platform that I really did invest in and started working at because that was what everyone was looking at. Then I went into Instagram as well. Um, 
Facebook for me at that time wasn't really like a thing. I did start Facebook, but I just didn't think it was beneficial for what I was doing specifically because what I wanted to get out with visually were images and content to start off with and to be able to show people the sort of service that I'm giving, you know, in terms of styling and, you know, creative direction and stuff like that. Then I did kind of go into Twitter, but Twitter for me was more a personal thing. So that was being able to like still speak, speak authentically to my consumers if they follow me on Twitter um, through um, my brand sort of values that I believe in as myself, as, a, as an authentic person. So um, I did also go on YouTube, but I found now just with my brand, um, I'm kind of swaying slightly away from YouTube only because there's a specific sort of idea how I see my brand. And I think that Instagram is the perfect one for it. I don't have to be on everything for, for people to understand who I am. And this is the thing that I always say is that, you know, there are going to be consumers that are going to ask you to, or, you know, my the followers and like, you know, people ask me to be on YouTube. Sometimes it's so I can't be have a cooking show on YouTube because people are going to be like, but that's not really what you are doing. Do you know what I mean? I can maybe do different snippets of in different ways and create content in a way that I believe best for my brand. But you don't have to be everything to everyone, you know. So I think with YouTube, I've just like I've tried my best to, you know, to to sway away and more to Instagram and focus on that. So what I have advice for entrepreneurs is that I think firstly, Insta we all know that Instagram is the biggest platform in terms of advertising, in terms of just getting your portfolio going. I would say start with Instagram, then possibly, or even start with the website first, but those two are the most essential things that I believe in building a brand that you really do need. Because it's so interesting when you're talking to someone that has a business and you ask them, do you have Instagram? You still want to go refer back to images. I don't know why we always refer back to images, but we sort of want to refer back to images is it in actually we think you might not think about it but as a human being you associate yourself with brands that you like and that might be because of their values that might be because of their aesthetic it might be so many different reasons but people need to visually see that so instagram is the perfect place for people to sort of see your portfolio and who you work with and why you're doing what you're doing and website has all the information so that's basically what you're doing all your contact details so someone can always refer back to that when it comes to things like t twitter i think twitter is a really good one to have only because people are constantly having conversations on twitter so you can constantly retweet things you know be part of the conversation and someone a brand that does that really well that is like completely like different to my industry is nando's nando's is always in conversation they're always replying mm -hmm. to people's tweets they like are advertising in these very smart ways by retweets and in people's tweets it's interesting to see so just being amongst that conversation and still advertising but still sticking to your brand identity just speaking in a different voice i think twitter is that perfect platform for that um, when it comes to video and stuff, it really does depend on your your services that you provide, your product that you would provide. You don't always have to be on YouTube, but you, YouTube is kind of the next level thing um, that you could be consistent with in terms of like if you have a product, maybe showing people how to use that product. But you could also still use it on Instagram. Do you want to move IGTV? So it's always just what you're really good at and using those facilities to to as a marketing tool to be able to connect with people you don't have to be on everything but i would definitely say website and instagram wow thank you so much that, that's quite brilliant advice um i do i do agree with you 100 percent and something i just want to yeah. add um I've, I've noticed something sometimes whenever our future females ambassadors speak and um as well as whoever they're currently interviewing is mm -hmm. a lot of the times we kind of also forget the basics when carrying over the message in the sense that um i want you guys to actually go and have a look at camo's instagram page and there's a few things that you're going to be noticing whenever you go through it it's number one her personality reflects through the instagrams every single individual post whenever she posts stories um she's kind of become part of a brand 
and I th I'm not sure if that's exactly how your influencer um, role kind of started and whether it was by accident or it kind of just moved into that direction. And another thing I've noticed with you is you're very, very, very consistent. Um, whether it's, you know, the type of images that you're posting, your voice, you have a specific voice that you write in. Um, and it's not, it's not a cold platform in the sense that, you know, it, it feels like I'm, I'm reading a business Instagram or a business blog. It's very humanized. And I think that's something that you do quite well, Cameron, is, is actually bringing yourself into your brand and portraying yourself and kind of merging yourself with your brand. Um, was that by Thank choice you. or is it? something that's um did you actively go sit and think listen this is something i need to start doing or is it something that just came naturally to you um okay so obviously like when i first started it was a passion project so it wasn't my goal wasn't really to make money but it was more so to create and i kind of saw blogging as sort of my portfolio so when i created things for brands i sort of wanted you you know like and have a story what I was doing so that's and that then then slowly brands started approaching me to like do more creative work for them and um once I did more creative work that um sort of led into my Instagram and how I started influencing and stuff but like something that you said I think the biggest thing for me was just staying authentic and true to myself um in terms of branding as well it's just changed from the beginning like if you first saw like what I was doing um, it's changed so much over the years and I keep going back to like look at my old pictures and stuff like that but literally my brand has changed so much I actually recently went through a rebranding and I think just during COVID I think it was like two months into COVID um, the lockdown period I, I decided to do sort of like a, a rebranding as well and I just kind of wanted to say you know less filters started to be like all like more, more effortless and not being so scared because in the beginning I was a bit scared of the fact that I was so minimal because I was so different to a lot of people but I was just like okay let me just go back to that because that's what I really wanted to do anyway um, and to clean it up a little bit more and like using less filters I kind of wanted people to start seeing who I am in a in a in a, in a beautiful aesthetic but more in an authentic way as well mm. so I constantly am rebranding as I go along it's not something that like I don't know. Um, I plan like this is what I, I like. I have to constantly rebrand myself so that I'm making sure that I'm actually communicating who I am to those to everyone. So, so this is actually brilliant because <laughs> clearly it's it was successful because I noticed it <laughs> and I loved it. I absolutely loved it because you don't see yeah. that consistently with brands. Um, yeah. There's so many times and. I know with myself and my clients, there's so many times I need to tell people, bring yourself into your brand, humanize it. People want to connect with people. Um, and I've noticed that about your Instagram page and I absolutely love this. And I kind of, even the first time we called and I had a chat, it kind of felt like I already knew you. So, and it's all your hard work that you placed into your Instagram page. And I must say, I think you executed it really, really good. Thank so you. well done on that specifically. Um, and just with your content creation, um, specifically with filters and the fact that you're so minimal in, in, in your design and effort, um, I think kind of plays into your favor, to be honest. Um, oh, thank you. And that's something I want the entrepreneurs to just go and have a look as well. Um, whenever you market on Instagram, you need to, I, I know Cameron mentioned that, you know, she's kind of using less filters, but you need to be consistent in, in the type of images, your filters, the way you write, whatever you're doing, you need to kind of have like a brand voice um, and try and stick to it. So whenever anybody views content, they immediately know it's from you before even reading it. Um, so yeah, just a little bit of a marketing tip <laughs> in there as well. Um, yeah. And then the last but not least, this is kind of my, my favorite part um, of yes. the discussion <laughs> is with you showing up with audiences. 
Um, sorry, I'm just looking for that, that discussion point. So getting in front of your audiences. Um, I know you refer to yourself as a ambivert, if I'm not mistaken, yes. if you can just explain <laughs> the term once again. Um, and tell us how you kind of overcame your fears um, from where you started. You're, I mean, you're an influencer, you're, you're a motivational speaker, you're a blogger. Your, your, your career has actually kind of flourished in, into such a big role. How, how did you kind of overcome your fears, you know, getting in front of your audience and actually showing up? So I think when I first started, like I was so shy. Okay, wait, first I have to um, say what an ambivert is. So an ambivert is someone who's basically an extrovert and an introvert at the same time. Um, so like, okay, so when I first started off with blogging, I never thought that I would actually go into the stream of being like sort of like a motivational, inspirational speaker. And um, I, you know, the thing is, I'm actually really shy. A lot of people, you know, don't know that about me. And a lot of people will have a preconceived idea about me because they never think that I'm shy. They think it's to do with attitude, which it really isn't. It's just that I'm really shy. So um, the thing is, I excel being an extrovert when it's my... When it's like and a lot of people don't know this about me and this is also part of the reason as to why like I wasn't really on YouTube that much is because I'm not really much of an extrovert at I if you see my mom and I together and especially in a whole lot of our YouTube videos that we have done in the past like you'll see that my mom is more of an extrovert so she's the one that's like you know always like you know speaking and like very confident and stuff I'm confident but I'm just more of an introvert like I'm more quiet and stuff like that so when it actually the first First time I had my first motivational speaking um, was when I can't even remember what year it was, but it was basically a whole bunch of women in the mining industry, and they had asked me to come and do a talk on styling, and I was just like freaking out because I was like, and my mom was like, "They're the extrovert, like, oh, you know, how can you be so scared, like, you know?" So, and I was just like, "Oh my gosh, like, this is something that I have to conquer." And I thought about it for months and months and months, thinking like, "What am I gonna say?" I have to say so kind of like my trick is that I kind of make things very interactive so that I kind of get away from being an introvert but also it gives people a chance to get to know me a little bit more it also gives them a chance to be able to think for themselves as well rather than you just regurgitating information it gives them a chance to be interact with you like asking you questions and it challenges me as well to think about things and that sort of helped me and pushed my boundaries in terms of being an, an introvert and actually helped me to be more of an extrovert. So when it comes to career, I excel in that and being able to speak to people and stuff. But when it comes to personal, I'm more quiet. So yeah, I think my biggest trick is literally if you are an introvert and if you are an entrepreneur, it's so important to maybe just find a way that works for you best and being, being able to communicate with people. So I always find that just like having an like a interaction what I did is questions. I never expected that. So I'm at a speaking event and I'm asking everyone that's watching me on stage questions. And that kind of helped for them to think and for it to be more interactive and to get more information out of me rather than just sitting there. Because to be honest, like people's attention spans after like five minutes, <laughs> you know, they get impatient with you just listening to information. So it's like, I actually want you to walk away with the best knowledge ever. I want you to walk away with something, you know? So I think the best thing is just to be interactive. I must say, um, when we had a chat earlier on as well with me viewing so many different YouTube videos, um, mm -hmm. <laughs> this is probably one of the best tips I've received. And I'm um, also, whenever I stand, even today I was sitting here <laughs> thinking, oh my hat, I'm so nervous. But being yeah. interactive and asking everybody questions and actually seeing the comments, it, it helps. Um, so yeah, so for anybody that's out there that's a bit yes. shy, not sure, she, I mean, just look at this girl. <laughs> she's, she's flourished. She's also been there. She's faced the exact same things. But she, number one, pushes herself every now and then out of her comfort zone. And she's learned coping mechanisms um, for specific traits whenever she's speaking she interacts with the audience and I, I think that's brilliant it's a really really nice way to get all the attention off of you and actually kind of engage yeah. with everyone 
I think also the, the most important thing as well, I think when we're speaking about it, is just that, you know, it's so important as well just to take time to, you know, do something with all your efforts. Do it at 100% or don't do it at all, you know, because um, that's how I feel about YouTube as well. It's kind of like just, you know, be it 100% or just don't do it at all because I kind of don't like giving people half efforts. And for me, it's just kind of... I feel as if I'm not in the right space or whatever it be, emotionally, physically, or whatever, I'd rather just take that time away um, and reevaluate my brand and come back when I'm perfect. Because um, it's okay sometimes, yes, for people to see the weaknesses and stuff, but the most important thing is for brand identity and for people to recognize me. You know, I don't want to come on and people are like, whoa, who is this? You know, <laughs> so it's so important to like, you know, stand to who you are and just, and take that time that you need. I took a couple of days, you know, away because personal things were happening in my life that, you know, I just didn't feel like I was being authentic if I could share something that's happy, but it's deep down inside, I'm not really, you know, so I always, I'm honest with people to say, you know, I needed a couple of days out. And that for me is the biggest thing that you can do as a brand to be able to communicate to consumers to say, listen, you know what, actually, I won't be able to give you the product in two days. Would you be happy if I give it to you in three days or four days? It. so i think that's what we do with just brand identity so you don't let people kind of like flying in the air like what's happening <laughs> i must say that's something um that's a very very valid point is you know setting the right expectations and meeting it um i think i think actually i know that's kind of one of my my personal mottos as well is making sure that I manage anybody's expectations whenever I'm working with them mm -hmm. and kind of meeting it either before the deadline or, or over exceeding it, even if I can, but if they have the wrong expectation, then I'm normally in trouble. So that's, that's yeah. a very valid point. And I love the fact that you kind of, you know, you take a break um, and we're all human at the end of the day and not, not faking it. And I think yes. that once again comes through on your Instagram pages with you being so true to yourself and you can read it whenever, you know, you comment or you, you post the content throughout the week and the month, your content is identifiable number one, mm -hmm. and it's true. It's not fake. Um, mm -hmm. which is something I loved once again. I'm loving Thank so much you. of your Instagram. <laughs> I'm just but, like uh, seeing all these questions and I'm just freaking out because I'm uh, like, oh my gosh, there's so many questions and some of them are so hard. <laughs> that's, that's the thing. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hand it over to Anandi, who's going to be going through all the questions. Um, she had a chance to read th through some of them for you as well. So Anandi, there you go. So the first question is, um, how do brands, either company or in individual, convey their brand in a more purposeful and meaningful way, especially when marketing to a generation that is the most socially conscious, like Gen Z, that is starting to take a bigger portion of the consumer base. Wow. I think you Yeah, that's a very difficult question, but sorry? I think you've covered a lot of it, but um, yeah. I'd love to see what else you have to say around that. Okay, so basically the question is, how do you um, like uh, be able to communicate with your consumers, right? So especially uh, the consumers that are so socially aware of stuff, right? If I'm not mistaken, yeah, 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 the question. Perfect. Okay, so um, I think, like I said, just going back to brand identity, it's so important to write down what's important to your brand and during that whole brand mind map, you know, because that will help. That's what I do every year in the beginning of the year. What do I want to achieve? And just the brand values and everything. I think you shouldn't be so scared about what's happening socially, just as long as you're promoting your brand in the right way and the right, and that you, what you are sort of people have to say listen to what they have to say but take what's good for you for your brand you don't have to like sort of like um i don't know how to explain this, this is so hard but i just don't be so don't be so scared to like you know if someone's asking you to do something that's completely different to what your brand aligns with don't just say yes for the sake because you want to please them like go back to your brand and say this is not part of my brand this is not 
so yeah i think i think the most important part as well is just knowing who you are and being able to communicate with the sort of the millennials or like you know the the new upcoming generation is that you just have to make sure that that is your target audience as well because if it's not your target audience and you're trying to like advertise to them then it will kind of flop in them in a way if that makes sense mm, yeah it does it okay does. I hope I answered it because sometimes I can kind of just like, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> <laughs> I think, you know, for, for me and maybe Marlies, you'd agree from a marketing perspective, I think it's very important, exactly mm-hmm. like you're saying, come on, it's important to know your brand identity, to know your brand story mm-hmm. and just keep stay authentic and true to who you are. Then you should be resonating with the right people. And a conversation mm-hmm. we had the other day as well as if that person mm-hmm. isn't resonating with you, then maybe that person isn't your ideal client and that's okay too. Mm -hmm. Sometimes Mm -hmm. not every, like you said earlier, not you're not for everyone and everyone is not for you. And that's okay. Mm Because if you're not going to be able to serve that person, then you won't be able to work with them anyway. So there's somebody else out there who would work for them and Mm -hmm. there's somebody else who would love you for who you are and what you stand for. I can can actually give you a personal example. It might be so silly, but... um, so I'm currently redoing my, oh, I'm currently doing my home and I, you know, obviously I, my favorite color is white and creams and stuff. I love Valens. Okay. I really love, I really love them, but uh, you know, and actually the other day I walked into there and I was just like, like, I really love this stuff, but can you make it in cream? And they were like, no. They were like, no. And I was like, okay, well, can you make this in cream? Because I really like this, but I really like, if it was in a cream, I'd like, you know, to be my brand. And they were just like, no, you know. And I just kind of, it made me, like, I came home and I thought about it. And I was like, but why? Like, I'm asking a brand to do something that's completely out of it. And that's not who they are. But I'm expecting them to cater to me, you know. It's kind of just like, come on, if you like the couch, take it in a black take it or leave it, you know, type of thing, you know? So I think that's mm. a perfect example is what you're saying is that you can't be everything to everyone. Like you, there's going to be a point where you just like, this is who I am. This is my brand. You know, sometimes it'll work for you. Sometimes it won't. Exactly. Exactly. So the next question I have here is from Katie. She says she loves your brand name, Perfect. particularly because it makes you wonder who you are and what you do. Her brand name is Cheeky Mantua, oh. but some people say it isn't great because it does not directly relate to her business, which is stationary. Um, do you, come on, feel the name mm-hmm. of your brand being seemingly mysterious is a good thing or can it make it harder to market your business? Okay, so that's, okay, this is the first time I'll answer yes and a no, okay? Um, yes, because I think that sometimes your brand has to like sort of, um, display what you're doing, but also no, because if you listen, if you look at a brand's going back to Valens, like you don't know what that is. I mean, but if you go onto their portfolio, if you go onto their website and their Instagram, um, you'll see exactly who they're about and what they're about. It's the same thing sort of with my blog. Okay. So with Will Kate Lady, a lot of people don't know what that has to, a lot of people actually thought that it had to be, um, but it's when you go onto my website, when you go onto my Instagram, then you know who I'm about, what I'm about, what am I doing? You know, and I think that's the most important thing. So I think don't get too hung up on the, the name so much. It's really about what you're putting out there to people, your consumers. I mean, if your if your brand is, is, you know, a cheeky mantua, but then like when, and it's, and it's stationary, but I go and I see like friends and family, like, you know, and your whole, like, I don't know, life, I'm not going to know what your brand is about. So really just try as much as possible to push what your product or your service is about so that people are able to see that. Perfect. I think it's exactly what you were saying. Um, It ties into your brand identity and your aesthetic. And if that's consistent then your name will become synonymous mm. with that um i think exactly I'll... yeah perfect the next question we have is not necessarily a branding related question but i do think it has validity um so i, I don't want to pronounce your name incorrectly it's a name temba i'm so sorry the funny one please please go i'll, I'll help I'll, I'll ask Kamo to help me just now but she says her company is an infancy stage and it's such a daunting task to find new clients without credentials. Do you have any advice on how to move past this hurdle? Um, okay, so 
snare timbre, right? Thank if I'm not you. mistaken. So <laughs> okay, so she's saying that um she's having having difficulty with being able to find new clients, right? Without having like credentials like a portfolio going. Um okay, so I think Oof, this is also quite a hard thing because sometimes sometimes you will get people that will be able to like just trust you from the go clients will just be able to trust you um that's probably dependent on what they've heard from someone else or the relationship that, that you have with them directly but it is so important to have earlier that is what will you and they see to be able to trust and get value especially if they don't know you visuals and having a portfolio is something that they can refer to to be like okay i trust this person i've seen something that they do say for example if it is a product like um let's just say a perfume right you're gonna have to have the picture of the perfume or some sort of you know drawing or whatever it is visually on instagram or on your website that someone can refer to to say that this is what they're referring to the product it's very hard for someone, a client to refer to something that you have no sort of like um, record of what the product or the service is, if that makes yeah. sense. So I think my advice is that it's so important. Do set up a portfolio. So whether that's on Instagram or on website and sort of get pictures, even if it's on your iPhone, but if as long as it looks visually presentable, you know, just get something out there so that your clients can, you know, Or you out of them. I think that's great advice. And I think something that, you know, Marlies and I, and I think as a future female community, also our big advocates mm -hmm. of is, and the point of this presentation and our month of June is to also get yourself out there so that people can start connecting mm -hmm. with you and that you can start sharing your expertise mm -hmm. and your experience and your story. And even if you have a product, you know, start sharing with your customers how to use that product, the different benefits of that product. The more that they connect with you, I think that also builds a bit of authority, expertise, and to a degree, our credentials, I think, because then they can start seeing, I think your, your trust, your validity comes mm -hmm. through very quickly when people are connecting with you in that way as well. And can I just also add something, but um, just having a brand as well, as much as we say, don't judge a book by its cover, but honestly, when it comes to having a brand, that's the first thing people do is they... Mm -hmm. They do do that, yes. I think that make sure your vision from the first part is always good. It's kind of like a dating app. If you see the picture, you kind of want to know, like, is everything, like, do I like everything that I'm seeing? That's the same thing with the brand. Someone has to like everything they, that they're seeing to be able to invest in you. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. Perfect. Okay, our next that's, that's spot on, to be honest. That's, that's, that's spot on. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Don't um, ask me if I've ever been on a dating app. <laughs> <Just not. laughs> uh, our next question is, the industry is so saturated <laughs> and people are doing the same thing all the time. Everyone wants to be a minimalist and others are trying to get into the luxury space. How do you keep evolving in a space that is becoming more and more the same in terms of content? Okay, so this is actually going to go back to the question. Um, to brag on not in line what I'm doing um, because this is the thing okay so when it comes to the influencers you want to be popping you want to be out there you want to be known you want to do everything you want to jump on every paid for partnership you want to you know you want to do everything and to me that's not necessary because that's not in line with my brand um, it does mm -hmm. I think we may have just lost you there come on doesn't matter if my followers are going to have to jump onto sorry uh, we just missed your last two sentences, I think. What, what was I saying? Sorry. <laughs> you were saying um, you don't have to do everything. You don't have to say yes to everyone. I think you should maybe just start with this one from the beginning. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> the influencer, you want to be well known. You know, you want to be out there. You want to jump on every paid part. Don't want people to know you like it's not necessary for me it's just like you have to stick to the brands that are in line with who you are and your brand identity because it's you know you might have 50 paid partnerships and whatever and that's an amazing achievement to have but in the end are people really going to carry on following your brand if it's if all these paid partnerships that you're working with are not 
sort of brands that you would ordinary work with on a daily basis or that you would use on a daily basis. So that's kind of brand association. I think that's the most important thing. And being able to like, obviously the space is becoming more saturated, but I'll give you like an success story, um, which is really important is that someone might have like 500 K followers and someone like me that has more of a niche market that has like 40 K followers. Okay. Um, okay. An example would be that we were sent, um, the, the same product. So an influencer was sent the same product as me, but she got a campaign to do it and I didn't. Okay. It was that she did the campaign, whatever. Um, she, the return on investments was a lot lower than me. I was able to get a lot higher return on investment. And this is obviously differentiates from influencer, influencer, brand to brand. But on the, on the return on investments, I was able to get like three times more the amount than she was. And she has like, let's just say she has like 500,000 followers, right? Um, for me, it goes back to brand association. Who are you associating yourself before, you know, this partnership, whatever came on? Um, who, like, are you, were you saying yes to everyone and also your engagement? So like, are you really communicating with your consumers on an authentic level? Do they believe everything that you say? You know, if I say, you know, use this hair product, it's amazing. Do they believe me or do they, is it just another paid partnership? Yeah. So I think with this thing of everyone trying to like be a minimalist, be in the luxury space. Like you fake it but it's not really the thing like you can't fake it until you make it because it will actually ruin your brand so i think for me it's just kind of like making sure that i am authentic okay it might everyone else might be doing it but what am i doing differently this is who i am and this is what i'm going to stick to i'm not kind of influenced by what other people are doing whether or not it's becoming, becoming saturated i have my loyal brands and my loyal consumers so that's what i'll stick to hmm. i completely agree and and we've also had this conversation because i've worked on the brand side before and i think it is so important hmm as a brand or a small business that exactly what we said at the beginning when Marilise asked you this question around influencer marketing it is so important to know who you are choosing to work with and likewise the type of content that you are putting out there um mm -hmm. making sure that you are authentic making sure that you are aligning with the right type of audience that will buy from what you have to say and i think it ties into a question that, that Sipokasi has where she asks do numbers on social media matter more than engagement? And, and I don't think it does. It depends on the type of engagement you have, the type of conversations you're having. And exactly like the example you just used, having the big numbers does not always result in the actual sales, which at the end of the mm -hmm. day, any entrepreneur, any brand, any business is after. Mm -hmm. That's so true. Great. Then I see there's another question here. Let me just grab it. Oh, yeah. What do you do if your audience wants to see more of you on YouTube because they enjoy your YouTube content, but you feel that it no longer aligns with your brand? Oh, okay. I feel like you are someone that watches my YouTube <laughs> because, and the reason why I say this is because I've been getting a lot of questions like this with regards to YouTube. Okay. So, um, let me be honest with you. The reason why also I've kind of stepped, made it a product because of time okay edit um it takes a lot of efforts and time mm -hmm. to edit and right now as my brand i have so many other priorities that i want to make stronger before i can get onto youtube so for me there are people that are on youtube for specific reasons and they excel in that but for me my focus is on other things and i don't necessarily as much as as much as other people do enjoy my YouTube content, and I am highly appreciative of that, but for me, it's so, I have to focus on the aspects that I think really need work. Yeah. And it's not saying that YouTube doesn't need work, it does, but it's just not, it's like maybe number four priority for me right now. So, um, like I've had people that ask me to do, for example, hair YouTube tutorials. I would honestly, if I had a team <laughs> that does editing and, I would do it every, I would give you a video every single day, you know, it's just. So my time doesn't allow me to give a video every single week. And that's honestly just, you know, the only answer that I can give you. Um, but yeah, so a lot of people also just to add on that is that a lot of people also ask me to do things that is not really in line with my brand. 
So for example, um, I've had people ask me like to do, I don't know, like, like very strange requests, <laughs> like, um, like, okay, let's just like cooking. Like, uh, can I show people what, how, like how I cook at home? And like, I feel like, okay, I understand. Like you just, you just curious to know, and you, maybe you just want to like sh- use one of my recipes. But maybe YouTube might not be the platform that I want to share that on. Maybe I might do it on Instagram, but I might do it in a different way, you know. And also, I'm not a cooking expert. So I feel like there's people that are really good at cooking and maybe that's their brand. But for me, it, it doesn't have to necessarily be my brand, if that makes sense. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> this is your question. No, I think it's exactly that, that and it, it ties back into what you've been saying a few times this evening is that you need to make sure that you can't be everything to everyone. You can't do everything because yeah. as a business owner, your your time is also quite valuable. And if you yeah. are trying to appear on every single platform to the best of your abilities, mm-hmm. then you are never going to have time to actually make money. You're just consistently creating content and that becomes yeah. very difficult to manage and keep up. So if it's mm-hmm. not something that's aligned with your brand and if that's not where your results are lying right now, it's like your results are very clearly on Instagram. That's where your, your following is. That's where your engagement is. Then there's, that's where your focus should be. And as you see new opportunities and you have time for it, I'd say from my personal opinion, that's when you start expanding. Exactly. But, yeah. but exactly like know when to say no and know when as a, an entrepreneur, a businesswoman, know what you are capable with of and what you're not great and just to, just to add on that sorry just a little bit more is just that honestly i've also just been filming so much content for youtube i have so much videos like that are ready for like videos and vlogs and whatever it's just coming down to editing like the time that i have is so limited and it's just when it comes down to it's just like not one of my top priorities right now so it's just it's a, it becomes so difficult you know like like you said, when there is more, when I get a team or whatever that can assist, then I'll obviously invest more when that opportunity comes ahead. But right now, I just have to focus on other stuff. Perfect. Then the last question I can see here is, are all your pictures done by a professional photographer or do you do it yourself? No. So I most of my pictures I do myself. Um, I used to do a lot of work with a lot of professional photographers. So it depends on what the or um, like um, mm. if it's a brand associated um, sort of content, um, sometimes they do have their own photographer that they want us to shoot with. So that will obviously then be a professional photographer. But most of the content that I do create at home, um, I do it myself. Um, and that's because also I've just learned how to do a photography course. I did a photography course, a very short one, mm-hmm. um, just so that I know the basics of how to use a camera. And yeah, so that helped a lot. Definitely. Perfect. Um, I can't see any more questions from anyone. Does anybody have questions? If you quickly want to pop it in the chat box. I see here. Oh my gosh. There's, yeah, there's quite a few. Um, I don't know if you're on the Q&A. Oh, did I miss a Q&A? Oh, there's a lot. Sorry. Oh, there. (laughs) Oh, great. There's a few more. Okay. Um, I see here. What advertising platforms do you currently use to get your brand out there besides Insta? um advertising platforms i think instagram is my biggest one but i also do use my my websites as well my blogs so i do have blog posts that i do for clients as well that have a lot more information about the products or how i use the product um so i do use my website as well okay perfect then another question here is what would you say is your value proposition Um, I would definitely say that it is so that's my unique selling point almost so i would say that it's um I effortless and minimal. I think that's my thing. That's all. <laughs> I think that's where my value lies. Effortless and minimal and quality. I think those are the three things that I, I stick to. Perfect. And then I think some of these questions we've already answered, but I see there's one more here. What tips can you give us to increase engagement with our audience? Okay. This she a very good from uh, the most important thing as well is to also ask your audience sometimes what do they want 
I know I said before, like, you don't have to be everything to everyone, but sometimes when you ask people, it's good to take what you need for your brand, if that makes sense, to better your brand. So I think it's good to ask people sometimes, you know, what would you like to see more of? What are you enjoying more of? But also the best thing to get increase your engagement is to look at what is doing really well on your Instagram or your web, website. What are people looking at and liking the most? And then stick to that. Because if they're not really liking, let's just say, your still photography with your flat lays, but they're liking more of your, I don't know, videos, for example, then stick to more videos. And that's how your engagement will increase. Perfect. So it's kind of just doing what your audience needs and sticking around. Perfect. I think those are all the questions. Yes, Anandi? Oh, I was just saying, I think it, it basically answers to giving the audience that you are speaking to what they want and, and in getting like interacting with them and checking if you what you're doing is still what they want i think the best person to actually look at this especially if you're an entrepreneur is to look at mariana hewitt she's an international global blogger and influencer she's also a brand um she has a brand called summer fridays which is a mask um but the one thing that i noticed even when she started building summer friday she used to ask people about questions about different um, moisturizers and stuff like that. And that's basically, she was just using people to like build her brand. And do you know how much that like benefited her? So um, the thing that she always does is just ask people, what would you like to see more of? What do you like most of? And she used that to amplify her brand. Perfect. Thank you Thank for you so, so taking the time this evening and chatting with our entrepreneurs. And guys, 